All right, there's a whole bunch of communists, socialists, Marxists, fascist parties in the United States. There's like, including the Democratic Party. <laughs> um, there's the Workers World Party, the Communist Party USA, the Socialist Party USA, the Socialist Equality Party, Socialist in Action Party, Freedom Socialist Party, World Socialist, American. Socialist Party, American Party of Labor, uh, Socialist Workers, Party for Socialism and Liberation, Social Democratic Party of America, and the Revolutionary Communist Party. Some of these exist, some of them probably have been disbanded, some of them have merged together, blah, blah, blah. Anyway, they all basically strive to different theories of Karl Marx's and Lenin's common writings. Like, for example, the Communist Manifesto. Fascism and Nazism were forms of communism or socialism, too. So, they're all basically, their basic premise of any and all forms of these groups is the state. Power. Power is given to the state in it for the common good. The flavors of different is how much power does the state get and how much liberty or freedom does the individual get. You can go to one extreme form where the state or the government has complete power and control over everything in people's lives. And then you can go to another extreme where it's communes where nobody has any power but everybody works together and they share and distribute everything equally. Either way, you always have a system of leadership or authority, and that system of leadership and authority is always corrupt, and it ends up where the powerful or elite or rich or whatever you want to call them control the little. Now, in this form, everybody has to work. But they work and all their money goes to the state and then the state distributes resources or allocates resources to the individuals based on either either based on their need or either based on their or in some cases completely equal. Meaning if the state decides that me and everybody else need to have a certain amount of food every week, that would be distributed to us. No one would be allowed to work and would be no one would be allowed to not work. The state would then issue you your jobs so to speak, and you would just work. Now, in a utopian form of this, it would require everyone to be equal. 
One hundred percent truly equal. Which would be crazy. And impossible. So basically, the system. The main thing is it's anti capitalist. But while it's anti capitalist, it's also anti freedom, anti individual, anti liberty. It's pro collective and it's pro state, pro government. So that is basically communism and socialism in a nutshell. There's a whole bunch of styles of it or versions of it. But it ultimately comes down to the state controls everything. Whether the state is elected or appointed, it always ends up with the power resting in the government, not God. And the power not being in the people, but the collective. Like, uh, for example, in Star Trek, uh, the Borg. The Borg are truly communist social species. They, though, conquer other groups and to a degree, they're a perfect utopia. Of it. Except for they spread and spread and spread and never give up because... You always need more workers, more drones. Another form in nature of a socialist is ants and bees. You always need more workers, but there's always the leader, the queen. The queen's always sprouting out their propaganda to create more workers. That's basically it. And that's it. Remember, God is good all the time. All the time, God is good. Jesus loves you. Jesus is God. Communism, socialism, fascism, Nazism, Marxism, it's all basically the same thing. It all comes down to capitalism is evil, the state is good. Um... Basically, it's that's basic, simple. There might be different flavors of it or versions of it on how powerful the state is, what personal liberties are people allowed, etc., etc. But it eventually puts, eventually, the state, as in all cases, the state, the government, if not put in check and kept in check by the people always get bigger, 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 bigger until they control everything. It doesn't matter what version of government we have. When we have the government and the state controlling the state eventually has absolute control. And the individuals have eventually no control at all. Unless they're, of course, the individuals who are, um, I don't know, in control of the state, then uh, those individuals, for some reason, because absolute power creates uh, corruption absolutely, so if you are a member of that elite group that are in charge of the state, You'll have everything, and you'll have pretty much freedom to be allowed to basically do whatever the heck you want. That's that's the only main thing that's different is that the elites, the elites in power of a of a, um, this form of government, 
will get to run and control and rule uh, everybody and everything's lives. Because the state isn't, eventually is not democratically elected. Not when eventually there's only one party, you can't have a democratically elected system with one party. The state is not, eventually becomes authoritarian. And becomes dictatorish, dictatorate, and becomes in a way that it, with their secret police or whatever, they take out any and all dissension of the state. When the state has absolute power, the rulers of the state have absolute control. Eventually it goes down from, it starts off maybe as a bigger group, and it eventually becomes a dictatorship. And that's not a good thing. Unless, of course, you have a good king, but... Uh, is there such thing as a good king? I don't think so. It's going to make me sneeze. Just think about it. So, like, comment, subscribe, and share. Keep on keeping on keeping on keeping I hope you're enjoying these uh, political party videos that I've been doing lately. <laughs> Have a great day. I'm not going to go and look up every single one of them because pretty much all the same, just different flavors or versions of the same shit, different package, if you know what I'm saying. Later, guys, hey girls.